As a warning, everyone, this topic may make you feel a bit uncomfortable. I'm going to ask everyone just to close your eyes for just a little bit. I want you to think about the last time you used the bathroom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the last time you flushed a toilet. Your eyes still closed now? OK. The really uncomfortable part. I want you to think and visualize what you flushed. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It sounds crazy. You're probably wondering, why is she asking me to visualize feces, excrement, poop, pee, turds, scat? There are so many words out there for something people do not typically like to think about or talk about. Yes, I'm going to talk about that today. All right, you can all open your eyes. You don't have to keep visualizing that. <laughs> Everyone poops. <laughs> many of you here today have either read this book to a child or someone read this to you. I'm going to talk about what happens with what we flush. You see, we all have inside of us the potential to help solve some of our largest global challenges, such as energy resiliency, climate change, and hunger. All right, you can laugh. That's OK. <laughs> this is a picture of me in my early teens with my parents in all my nerd-like glory. And a picture of a Daphnia magna, what's commonly known as a water flea. This is the organism that we were studying when my teacher at the time, Mr. Veldi, noticed a spark in my eye while in biology class. I was in absolute awe of these beautiful organisms moving about underneath the scope, not visible by the naked eye. Mr. Veldi told me that day, Tracy, whatever your future looks like, this needs to be part of it. That was the moment I started my love for science, and it was my first path towards working in this exciting, unique field that has so much potential, so much opportunity to make a positive impact on this world now more than ever. Eating and drinking provide the necessary nutrients and energy our bodies need each day to do those amazing things it does. During that digestion process, there is a lot of unused energy and nutrients. That valuable, unused material just gets flushed down the toilet. For the majority of the world's population, this material goes to a recovery facility. At the Nutrient Energy and Water Recovery Facility in St. Cloud, Minnesota, we are converting flushed material from homes and businesses into nutrient-rich fertilizers, renewable fuels, and energy. Nutrients are one of the key components that we are recovering from that material. Wastewater flows through miles of underground pipe before it gets to the recovery facility. At the facility, the water and the solids are separated. The solids are mixed in these large tanks, and a liquid fertilizer product is produced. Another fertilizer product we produce is by extracting the phosphorus from that used water and creating a crystal product. Now, they're right here. This is what our samples look like. We have our liquid product and our crystal product. And this, we have sample vials for all of you to take home of this crystal product that you can use on your house plants. That you may have provided the nutrients and ingredients for. Because <laughs> both of these products come from what's flushed. So we recycle these nutrients locally for crop production. On a larger scale, we can use these types of fertilizers to help support our global food production needs. In addition to nutrients, what's flushed contains an enormous amount of energy that we can harvest. At our St. Cloud facility, we produce 100% of our electrical demand from all of you, from the flush material and renewable energy sources. We are the only, yes, be proud, St. Cloud. <laughs> we are the only facility in the state, one of the very few in the nation that have accomplished this. So you're probably wondering how this energy gets created. It's actually 
actually almost identical to what's happening in our very own bodies during the digestion process. Helpful bacteria, what we call our bugs, break down the solids in these large tanks that are heated and mixed to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. During that breakdown process, these bugs create a gas, which is called biofill. That biofill is cleaned and run through our generators here to provide heat and power for our facility. This reduces greenhouse gas emissions, and it reduces the cost associated with treating that used water before it is released to the Mississippi River. The, rec the recovery work that we've done at the facility triggered citywide sustainability work. As of 2020, the city as a whole, to provide city services, we get 100% of our energy from renewable energy sources. The city has been recognized globally for this, so it's a big deal. <laughs> And we continue to work with other countries around the world, such as Germany and Northern Ireland specifically, that we've been working together with to expand our efforts and to learn from others. These are our city goals back in 2015. We exceeded these goals in 2020, actually crushed them 15 years ahead of schedule. And we now have new aggressive decarbonization goals for our entire community, not just what we do for, to provide city services. Our latest initiative is super exciting. It's our green hydrogen project. Green hydrogen is a fuel of the future. It is a, it is a key component to a clean, affordable, energy secure future for us all. There are so many benefits of green hydrogen, including it's energy dense. In fact, hydrogen contains three times more compared to diesel fuel. It can be stored, it can act like a battery, it's carbon free. There's multiple end uses, such as in the energy production and transportation industries. The process is actually quite simple to make this green hydrogen, something we've all done in our chemistry classes. An electrolyzer is used to break down a water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and waste heat is generated from that process. What makes this green? is the use of renewable energy, such as solar and biofuel, so all the energy from all of you, to power this electrolysis process. The process uses a minimum amount of water. That is a concern with some people when it comes to hydrogen production, but it's a very small amount of water. For example, for 400 gallons, that's less than it takes to fill a hot tub, you can power the average American home for one entire year with the electrolysis process. It's very energy dense. This project, a facility that uses all of the end products of the electrolysis process, hydrogen, oxygen, and waste heat, it's going to be the first of its kind in the world. These end products can be used at the recovery facility and within our community. We are partnering with local businesses, public transit, to use all of the end products of this process. This is gonna reduce costs of services, enhance our energy resiliency, decarbonize our fuel sources, and it creates jobs, it already has. Our recovery facility is having a remarkable impact on our community and influencing communities worldwide. All right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I leave you today with the request. Okay, next time you flush, maybe it's gonna be at intermission. <laughs> I want you to think about and look at that material in a different way. I do, I seriously do. It's, people think of it as ick, and it, it should be looked at as wow, and it's just amazing, ah. <laughs> and I know that will make you uncomfortable. I get it. I totally get it. But I also, I believe that is the very reason why we've not truly embraced the potential of this material. This material has tremendous financial, environmental, and societal value. The success of our city's energy and sustainability initiatives 
is a result of our big and bold ideas and having the courage to implement them. Taking action is the key. As we've discovered, the solutions to some of our most complex global challenges may be found in things that make us uncomfortable. Take a fresh look at everyday things around you and the potential within that. Don't underestimate what can be accomplished with small actions at a local level. In order to discover solutions to some of our most challenging problems, we need to be willing to get uncomfortable. Thank you.